Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool video game video for you today. We are screwing around with this Commodore 64 that my friend Matt brought in. And he has typed up a program. It took him three hours. It was three hours, right? Two. It took him two hours. He's typed up this program. And then whenever it gets done, and he's, he's trying to impress me, right? Whenever it gets done, it's a four balls floating around the screen that are slightly different colors. That's the whole program. It took him two hours to do this. This is what Commodore 64 programming was like back in the day. All right, Matt. Edit it a little bit and show him uh, what you're doing. Oh, slide that back a little bit so you can see it. All right, so he's going to edit it and show you some stuff about it and just t show you cool stuff and talk about it a little bit. All right, go ahead. All right. So, as you may have noticed, when I stopped the program here, the balls are still on the screen. It says break in 120 ready. Yeah. All right. So, this is for this is for all the the kids that have no damn clue what we're talking about. The, on the Commodore 64, you could write your own computer programs in BASIC, but it's it's a kind of advanced version of BASIC that has some stuff in it that BASIC all the like the BASIC in um, you're like uh, TI-99 calculators and all that. Yeah, yeah. All right. All right. So go ahead, Matt. Go ahead. Go ahead. So this is just a little BASIC program I threw together because I needed <laughs> to test the uh, Vic chip on this board, and um, you know. Let's just go ahead and uh, I'll explain this in a minute, but I'm going to get these balls off the screen because they're poke fine. five through two five three two six nine comma zero. So, okay. And now those balls are gone. How did you? Why did why did poke make those disappear? All right. So I will. It says ready. Go ahead. And, so I'll go ahead and list out this program here and you that I wrote in memory. Now did you steal this off somebody online? Nope. You came up with this. Yep. Okay. So is it copyrighted? No. If people steal it, are you going to get upset? Uh, let me put it this way. If someone can make money off of this, then they deserve every penny. <laughs> because um, <laughs> this has no value to anyone on the planet. Well, people are watching this right now. It must have value to somebody. So Okay, so here's all the code. Here's all the oh, tell them what you do, uh, what your background in code is. Oh, yes. Yeah, so oh, and your age, so they know that, you know. 31. He's 31, so this came out before he was born. Six years. Okay. Six years before I was born. Okay, go so, ahead, go ahead. Yeah, I've uh, been coding since I was about 11. Started out on uh, Windows 95 with uh, C programming. Failed miserably at that because I didn't have anyone to show me what to do. <laughs> Picked up QBasic. Is that really why yeah, you failed this miserably? This is exactly why I failed miserably, yes. Um <laughs> Because all I had was a book from 1980-something, and no one in my house knew how to use a computer, so I didn't get very far Okay. until I got QBasic. Well, now you're up to making balls bounce around the screen, yeah, so no, you've yeah. come a long way, baby. Yeah. So, I was, you know, QBasic was the version of BASIC that ran in DOS, and it only had text. It didn't have much graphical capability, and that's what made the Commodore so special. Um Honestly, 8-bit computer, 64K of RAM, nothing special to it. The only reason this thing had any popularity is the sound chip and the video chip made this thing look 10 times better than any DOS machine that was out in the day. Um, and that being said, the only downside is it's a very limited basic. So, like, if you want to do anything interesting with the video chip, you, have, you see these poke commands... Yep. What that's doing is that is going to a specific location in memory. We call them registers. And uh, it is putting a value. So you Okay, might... so like let's start at the top. So 30, you, you've got... Uh... Let's, let's clear the screen so we don't have so much um, distraction here. Let's, uh, oops. let's do list. So I'm listing the whole programs in memory. What I'm doing here is just displaying only the first, say, few lines. All right, so he's he's so basically, basically in basic you wrote ten for line ten. Could could you do like half lines, like fifteen? Um, yes, in fact you could do single lines, but that's a good point. So every line is stored in memory with that address of you see I've gone ten, twenty, thirty, fifty, mm -hmm. forty, fifty. Um, the reason we skip tens is because it makes it easier to go back and add in lines later. So you'll see like lines fifteen. And then sometimes if you really run out of space, you'll see like lines 11, 12, 
can you do you, but that's as that's as far as you can break it down yeah you, okay uh you can start combining lines with these colons in fact that first line there is actually one two three four commands all combined with colons oh okay um, yeah i can see that and that's just to save screen real estate honestly um so what i did before this all started is i put uh the data for the sprites into memory locations that are being picked up by this read command okay uh, the way you get the sprite information is boring and involves a lot of graph paper and binary math okay um but you take the binary data you put it in the memory and that's what read is doing so you're telling it to read for x equals 12 800 so i am reading from that sprite data and putting it into memory locations 128 through 128.63. so i'm putting okay. 64 bytes in the memory Okay, so X is your your what you programmed in before. Yeah, that is my index. Your sprite information. Y is, yes. Oh, okay. Yes. So I'm poking into location X data Y. Okay, and yep, I'm that looping makes sense. through that 64 times. Um, I'll go ahead and take the print inverted heart and Commodore had a lot of commands that um, didn't really have graphical representations. So, like, I can press clear home and it'll clear the whole screen. Uh -huh. But to do it in a program, you have to, uh, you only, you don't type a command like clear or something. You use the, uh, the inverted heart, which you get by holding down the Commodore key. Oh, so you're telling the screen to print clear the screen. Yes, exactly. Okay. Right. And that's why the screen blanks when the thing. It's, at, it's literally printing a clear screen on the display. Exactly. Okay. Um, I'll go ahead and uh, poke again, the same things before. So right. now you're poking a, a different location. So I'll go ahead and show you because I can do it here. So poke, whoops. So poke, uh, I, I happen, there's a charts that show you all this, but poke. So memory address 53281 is the screen background color. I had it uh, turned to black, but that's the color when the Commodore Force boots up. Oh, okay, six. Yeah, and then another thing, this is another thing that makes Commodore kind of special for things at the time. For anyone who's ever worked with a command line, you'll know that you can only type on the current line and everything that's above is just historical data. You can't oh, use yeah, yeah. go back so and like in So tell it like a, in a, if you've ever done the command window in, uh, in yeah, Windows, MS-DOS, like in Windows, yep. whenever you go to it, it, you know, you get a little C, semicolon, C colon thing, yep. uh, the command line. Once you type and then uh, hit something, it's done. It's done. You can't go back up and edit it. So what he's saying is, you can actually like on this. Show him what. You're so, about. so this is why. This, so in other words, this is why this was a much more advanced version of DOS, just because of user friendly things like this that they put in. So, you can go back up the screen and change stuff. So I'm going to change the memory register zero or two eighty, and I'm going to change the color to now seven. I don't know what seven is going to be. And so now I got another okay. So screen. so fi so um, register five three two eight zero is the border, correct. and five three two eight one is the actual screen. That's correct. And then then the co uh, comma and whatever number you put changes that color. Yeah, Com Commodore uh, sixty four has sixteen colors, zero through fifteen. Okay. Oh, that's all. That's a bad one. Don't let's, do that let's one. Let's get that off of there. It does kind of make me feel like a real American though. Fight for the rights of every man. I can't see the cursor. There it is. <laughs> Let's get that off of there. That is absolutely ugly. There we go. So, this line 30, that's what we're doing. We're setting the screen border and background to completely black. And I'll go ahead and... Uh, let's see. Let's list 40 through 100. Oh, so what do you mean it's completely black? Oh, so you're saying if it was set up like this, once you run the program, it's going to erase those colors and replace them with black. Exactly. Okay, cool, because you're telling it to. Correct. And so you're doing that just so that uh, whenever you do your balls bouncing around, it'll have a black screen. That is correct. If you did it without that line, it would it, be bouncing around on this screen. It would be bouncing around on this screen and looking horrible. Okay, cool. All right, so now we're at, now we're at list line number 40. Yes, so... For y equals, so is y, it, that's the sprite data that you put in before. Actually, I'm just reusing that variable. That is, um, oh, okay. That, yeah, you can reuse variables, and it's not always a great idea to do it. Keep in mind, folks, this is basic programming, and they named it that for a reason. This is the simplest crap in programming possible. This guy does, like, I think he works for, like, a, a nuclear, uh, a nuclear fission or something, right? Uh, I'm actually not at liberty to say. Oh, okay, okay. He can't say. All right. Uh, 
So, I'll, uh, this Commodore, uh, the VIC-20 chip, or VIC-2 chip, excuse me, it supports up to eight hardware sprites at a time. So, so eight things can be on the screen at once. And there are special tricks. You can make things disappear like they did. Pac-Man ghosts on the Atari. Correct. <laughs> so I want to tell them about the Pac-Man ghosts on the Atari so they know what I'm talking about. So, Because this is the exact same thing. Are you, are you talking about the flickering on Yeah. It? Yeah, okay. So, yeah, here's the here's the thing. And I'm... So, so on this, on the Commodore 64, you could display eight sprites on the screen at one time. That is correct. Um, there were tricks to get more, but there were basically eight. Now, the problem is you can only have, I think it is three sprites on the same uh, horizontal row at the same time. Okay. Um, once you started getting four... The Vic chip uh, actually can't um, keep all the the data in memory because it's refreshing every single horizontal line it draws. Okay. And it can't keep those sprites in memory. So the Atari Twenty Six Hundred was less advanced than the Commodore Sixty Four. Correct. They actually did they use the same processor? Was the Atari the Sixty Five Hundred Two? I think so. Okay, so they use the same processor, but the video. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure so. But the Atari did the video output on the processor. This does a has a dedicated video chip, making it a. That's why this looks. It this looks better. better. Yeah. Um, so, when you get more than three sprites on the screen at the same time, NES did this too, actually. But games hid that a lot better. You, they'll start to flicker and disappear, and you'll get these bands. I thought maybe they did it on purpose. Like they made it disappear so that at that split frame, there's only three things on the screen, and then they make those disappear and the other ones appear. Um. Uh, yep. Yeah, I mean that's what's happening, but it's not an. The programmers aren't doing it on purpose. That's just the video chip trying its best. So a guy, a guy told me the other day that if you look on Pac-Man, on the arcade version, they don't call them ghosts. They're called monsters. And the reason that nobody called them ghosts until the Atari 2600 version came out and the damn things were disappearing and flickering. Yeah. And so it was like a, you know. Yeah, I know exactly what you're getting at. <laughs> so anyway, the thing is, the Atari, the way they coded it, it... it can't display all of that at one time Not the way the they same code area, it. No. So they flicker on and off. And I mean, the Commodore too, it has limitations color wise. Um, you can do, it has 16 colors, but it can't use all 16 at the same time. Um, like each sprite can only have uh, one color in the mode. I've got it in now. I can set this, this is a 300 by 200 resolution. Uh -huh. I could cut my resolution in half, uh, 160 to. 200. Would it would it make all of the uh, the uh, pixels like or just the it doubles it all the it pixels. makes everything bigger it doubles oh, all that's the pixels. pretty cool and but the, but if you so why would you do that because if you have your resolution you can get uh, four colors per sprite instead of just uh, two. Oh okay so so like these sprites right now they have two colors um, per sprite they have <laughs> the sprite color and then a background which is transparent which is why they're balls and not. Yeah. squares like there's no yeah. square borders around them yeah um so that's two colors if you uh have your resolution you can get four colors one of which is still the background okay so background sense. plus three colors um but the so the hardware sprites really made the commodore because the texas no texas instruments had them the the uh tandy color computer that did not have hardware sprites so everything that was, was done with character graphics now character graphics are is people would draw with these. Oh yeah, yeah. They would just take these and combine them to make images. And some of the slightly more advanced computers, like the Tandy Color computer, you could define custom characters, but it was still a letter. That that was kind of how like all the old dot matrix printers. Remember, you could Ex print out stuff exactly using designs like that. That is exactly what they did. Yep. Yeah. And so basically, the game is actually just text on the screen it just uses a custom font to make it look like a game yeah so commodore has the backgrounds and stuff are usually character graphics but the action is sprites and um they break some of those color rules because so what computers bef before the commodore would have been unable to do the sprites um well the vic 20 which was the commodore's predecessor it had um I don't remember what kind of video chip it had. If it even had one, it might have just done it straight in the processor. But um, it didn't have sprites, hardware sprites at all. It only had character graphics, and that's why games like... Uh, oh, go look up uh, Qbert for the VIC-20 and the Commodore 64. Compare them, and you'll see the Commodore looks pretty close to the arcade version. 
and the Vic Twenty looks awful because Qbert has like these big black boxes around him as he jumps around because Qbert's actually just four letters. Oh yeah. Uh, put together to make <laughs> one character, and so like you can't have you can't show the background behind him because it's just that character. <laughs> so it's. Uh, all right. That's... All right. So where were we on this? We were at forty still. Yeah, we're still at forty. <laughs> we're going to get there though. <laughs> All right. So Commodore eight sprites, um, and those sprites um, use something called a pointer. If you've uh, dealt with C or uh, four, we have it. We're, we're all ignorant. Most things other than basic have pointers <laughs> in them. <laughs> um, basic, uh, but Commodore. So a pointer is a variable that has a memory location in it. Uh-huh. So my memory, um, my sprite data is in memory location 200. Okay. But the data itself is not 200. The data itself is whatever the sprite is. Yeah. So uh, address uh, 240 through 247 are the eight pointers that the sprites use. Okay. And since I'm using four of the same ball, I just set all the pointers to 200 because that's where my sprite data is. Okay. So that's all that is. Um, I think we're all already lost, but yeah, let's move on. Probably. What's the 50? The C equals 1. C, C equals 1. Uh, okay, so what that is... We're going to get to a point where he doesn't know how the hell he did it. Once yeah, it's pretty much. C, so... Okay. Th those are the colors. So C is color. Um, the first sprite is 1, which is white. Um, okay. And so, yeah, 287 through 294 is the eight colors. And I just went color one, color two, color three, color four, because oh, okay. I'm uncreative. Okay. Um, 70 is... Okay, so those sprites were actually... I see the magic number, 255. Yep. That's the magic number, isn't it? It is the magic number. Because that's would... actually 256. Is well, that right? It's, it's still 255. It's just the 256th number. Yeah. Because zero is the first one. Yeah. So, but isn't isn't that like a magic number? Um, isn't it, that what makes Pac-Man break and Donkey Kong break? Well, 256 is the magic number that makes Yeah, but that's break. 255. That's the 256th number. So in binary, 256 is... Or 255 is... That's in okay. binary. In right. one byte is... Eight bits. Ah, uh, so you're doing that. You're, that's how you make it move, right? But that's why 256 is the magic number because you're already at the max. Okay, so you can't do 257. 256. It won't, oh yeah, you can't do 256, which one, would be the 257. Here, I'll in fact actually, was while we're down here, I'll go ahead and show you. So I have a C H equals 255. Actually, the Commodore might have 16-bit registers, so this might not work. Might have to throw this all out the window. So, list, or no, not list, print, print H. So H is 255. That's not very exciting. All right. But if I do H equals H um, plus 1, and now if I do a print again, actually. Okay, so the Commodore does have 16-bit register, so I have to do... 32,000 is the magic number for Commodore. Oh, okay. But to, ex but to go ahead and explain, um, the reason the 256 is the magic number is because normally for 8-bit systems like Game Boys and Ataris and whatnot, once you... Uh, and Nintendo. And Nintendo. That's our favorite. Once you add one, yep. you uh, overflow, they call it, back to zero. Okay. And sometimes the game's just... It just goes and keeps going. Like your lives will overflow to zero if you get 256 lives. And then other times it can crash horribly. It just depends. Oh, okay, cool. All right, so where were we? We were on line 60 or yeah. 70, something like that. I'll, st I'll stop interjecting my stuff I don't understand. <coughs> All right. So the... We were at 70, yeah. So those sprites were double size. So why are you poking 53277? So those sprites were double size where each pixel was actually four pixels. Okay. And yep. the, the, you're doing that because... Those two registers, 277 and 271, um, just tell the VIC chip that you want to print those sprites at double height and then double width. Okay. And I'm going to zoom in on the screen so I can see better what we're talking about. Whoa. Maybe it'll... All right. So, show you an easy representation here. Um, 
So the reason it's 255 is I'm turning on, I want to double all eight sprites. If I wanted to only double the first two sprites, I would type, uh, that would be a three. Do what? We're lost. Yep, and I'm good in there. So remember <laughs> um, before where 255 is? We're not nuclear fission people. Binary. And binary? Well, uh, the reason uh, doing the first two sprites would be three is because in binary, three is one, two, three, four. One, two. Okay. And so the, <clears throat> a one in the first bit tells it that you want to double the first sprite. A one in the second bit tells that you want to double the second sprite. Mm. And so you see, you can so control eight sprites with one byte. Oh, okay, that's what you're saying. Yep. Yep. All right. Okay, so, it's clicking now. Yep. So one means double it for that position. Zero means don't double it for that position. I'm doubling all eight sprites, so that's why it's two five five. Okay. All right. So let's see. I'm doubling the size. I am setting my initial positions on the screen. That's one, what the eighty is, right? Eighty is setting my initial. So positions. your X and Y position. You're starting at a hundred for that one. Two hundred for that one. The third one is, okay, yeah, they're, they're all the same, but yes, in different quadrants. Yeah, X and Y, so I'm starting at four different corners. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, poke 53269, that is me enabling the first four sprites. Because 15 in binary is 0, 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So I'm turning on the first four sprites. Binary reads right to left, by the way. Okay. Um, so why aren't you doing it? But you only had four on the screen, right? Right. Oh, so but they're doubled? No, no, I'm doing the first four. Okay. The other eight, the other four sitting in memory, I just didn't do anything with them. Oh, okay. I could turn them on, but they would just be sitting in the corner because I never gave them positions. Okay, we might do that here in a minute just to show Yeah, just see what difference. happens. I have okay. No idea. All right. So we're up to line uh, 35. Uh, that's a 95, but yes. 95, I'm sorry. Yeah, so I'm turning on the four sprites, and then we're starting the motion. It's... Not anything terribly exciting. I'm just adding. So the, you just put M. What is M? Just something you're coming up with off the top of your head, right there, Basically. so that you know that it means motion. That's exactly it. Yeah. So that you could that could say for L. Yeah, L in the, uh, Usually they do I for index, but I already used I for something else. So I didn't okay. want to reuse it. So you're telling you're telling with that line line 100. You're telling that M is a variable variable between zero and 100. Correct. Okay. And then we will perform lines number 110, 120, 130, 100 times. Okay. And then, okay. So. Oh, because at 140 you say next M. Correct. Okay. So, so it's saying, okay, first M is zero. And yep. then it does 110, 120, 130. One, and then when it gets down to 140, it goes, okay, now M is one. And it's going to do that 100 times. Exactly. Okay. And so then how does it break out of that? Uh, when M gets to 100, it automatically... Oh, okay. A for loop is automatically has that breakout control. Okay, okay. So so it'll do 100, and that's that's going to make it move. So correct. how is it moving? So 120 will show us... No, 110 is how it's moving. Now, a couple of people are probably yelling at me right now. This actually doesn't go 100 times. It goes 101 times. Oh, okay. Because zero is the first number. They don't know. Yeah. Nobody's watching this deep into it that knows how to do this. This is correct. They already fast forward to the end and they're like, oh, come on. This guy, I don't know what the hell he's doing. He's just a nuclear fish assist. So, all right. 110, nothing exciting. Adding one to all of the numbers and or subtracting depending on which direction I want them to go. Uh, okay, yeah. So you've got the first one. You're adding one to the X and you're adding one to the Y. Which would make it go uh, to the right and up. So, yes, zero, zero is up here. Adding yep. to the X goes this way. Adding to the Y goes this way. Oh, okay. See, I'm used to it being a grid, like a plus, where like X... That's your... Um, yes, that's... So, but you would be starting in the middle if you did that. You're doing it where they're starting in the corner. Uh, most computers actually do it that way. Yes. Oh, okay. okay. Basic especially. So the second one... You're going to subtract one, which means it's going to move to the left and up. And up, okay. So it, would it? So if it starts over here, would it come up through the bottom? If it starts over. So X two is it going to start in the right corner? It is starting in the bottom right corner, yes. Okay. Because Y is its height. Okay. Okay. All right. Yep, that makes sense. And um, so and also notice that is not a, a one; that is actually an I. Oh, okay. And I is set to one. Oh, okay. All right. And so 
what I'm doing is moving them all by one, poking, poke, I'll save you the spare, I'll spare you the trouble. Five three two four eight through five three two five five. Those are all position data for those four sprites. I'm just all I'm doing is writing the x and y coordinates to the sprites that I want to be uh, moving. Okay. Yeah. Um, next M. All right. One forty five. I not I. All I'm doing is taking an I, or taking one, making it negative one. So okay. that way all the directions will reverse. Okay. So whenever it gets to a hundred, it's going to start going backwards. Correct. Ah, um, so what then? So what? One hundred and fifty go to one hundred. You're saying go to line one hundred. Yep. Oh, okay. A, so there's your loop until you hit escape a, or something. That's a permanent loop. There's no way to break out of it other than the hardware run stop. Yeah. Okay. All right. So hit it. Let's see it do it. All right. So it's going to clear the screen black and it's going to start all these these uh, balls that he's made moving. All right. So the corner of the screen is not actually the corner of the TV. It's the corner of the blue box. Um. No, it's the corner of the screen. I started in a little bit. Just oh, okay. Cause okay. Of, also worth mentioning, the sprite's coordinates are not the center of the sprite. This coordinate is also the top left of the sprite. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. That yeah, makes sense. So, all, right. all right. So edit anything for us so we can see like how you would go about changing things. So, so right now we've got white, blue, red, pink. So how did you break it? Uh, run stop. There's a dedicated run and stop button on the keyboard okay so since it was running if you hit it it stops it and if it was stopped if you hit run yeah you would think that doesn't work i don't know why okay um somebody out there's probably telling us why right now so they're furiously typing <laughs> this is why this is why so as you saw me do at the beginning if i write zero to that register all of them disappear but what i'm going to try i've actually never tried this so I'm going to try to turn on all eight sprites at the same time. Oh, boy, we're excited for this shit. Oh, I saw them. They, ran they were there the for a second. Yep. Because you didn't tell them to move. I didn't give them a position. And uh, the thing about early computers is uh, you don't always know what's in memory. Like, you would assume if you've never touched that location, there'd be a zero there. Uh -huh. um, for all I know, I could have just sent those things to, like, negative 100 by... 300 by 700 because, because there might be something in memory telling it to do that because you have no idea what was in memory before you started there on our we were we did a video of a uh, dungeons and dragons pinball machine yes did you see that one uh not it, that was the one that got caught on fire that we redid the stuff in the back i do remember that well anyway yeah so that, that's a bally 6803 game yes and they have whenever the batteries die it kind of corrupts the memory oh yeah and what it what it uh, one of the things that it does is it it corrupts the settings. So one of the settings and it says, you go into you go into the test menu and you go in and it says, uh, uh, credits, Z, uh, 01 for games or, or one you know 01 games for 01 credits. Uh, and whenever it corrupts, it'll say, AX games for. 4F credits and it has no freaking clue what the hell you're talking about and so no matter what you do hitting the start button it'll never work correct you can't put AX credits in it so it just the corruption just screws it all up but it's it doesn't permanently do it it's just until you go in and clear it so out. you can reinitialize it yeah. I will tell you something that has uh, got the same problem but much worse is the uh, Philips CDI uh huh it had um, backup memory that stored its settings and uh, your save game data and all that with a battery backup but um, when the battery failed, your battery, you didn't just lose your save games. Everyone's used to that. But when the backup failed, it would totally corrupt the memory and the CDI wouldn't start because it tells you that um, your memory's full and it won't. It refuses to run until you clear out the memory. Oh. The problem is it's corrupted the memory, so when you try to start the program to erase <laughs> the memory, it crashes. Oh, that's so funny. it totally bricks the system until someone can go in and replace the memory chip because they put the battery inside the integrated circuit crazy it is not in a socket so is there something you can do on this where you can break it where like one of the balls disappears you can do like three of them instead of four of them uh, sure um let's just go ahead and uh, turn the balls off so i can see the screen better um also remember my uh, rules about color um, said I could only do like four colors at a time. Yeah. Uh -huh. These sprites break those rules because you can see here I can change my text color and they'll overlap it just fine. It doesn't um, like 
that's one of the neat things about it. And that's why you can do such better graphics with this. That's cool. Um, so let me five, three, two, six, nine. Turn those off, get them out of the way. Let's do a list command. Oh, yes. So, see, uh, 1,000 through 180, that's my sprite data. Oh, okay. It's very... If you drew that in binary on a graph paper, it would make total sense, I promise you. Okay. Um, so, I was looking for... So, all right, so line 95 is what I want to edit. So, list uh, 95... All right, so that's line 95. So what's it saying there? So that, oh, that's the color. Nope, that is turning on the first four sprites. And so you were saying you wanted to turn on only the first three sprites. That would be a seven. In binary. In binary, that would be yeah, three ones in a row. Okay, all right. So, that, so now if I do a list uh, 90 through 110, and you'll see that my settings... Yep, you changed it. Yep. And so now you saw them all load for a second and then blip away. And oh, because you've still got eight trying to load. Yep. I load all eight, but then I turn them off. Ah, oh, that's cool, man. And so now, and uh, sprites always have uh, memory order priority. Sprite one always will over be on top. Sprite two will be on top of the other seven sprites, but under oh, sprite that's one. Cool. And that's why the you're seeing what you're seeing there. All right, so show people, um, here, I'll back this out. Show people the hardware a little bit. They've probably seen a Commodore 64. Yeah, but. I hope most of them have seen it by this point, but especially the people that have actually bothered to watch this at this point. Obviously. Yeah, that's true, that's true. So to the kids at home or people that don't remember these things, you may think, you're used to seeing something like this, you may think, oh, here's the keyboard and the computer, and it's hooked up to a TV. Um, this is the computer. Like power, joystick, cartridge, memory. This is your computer. All of this is that whole damn thing is your floppy drive. Is the floppy drive? Oh yeah, load a pro load a program so they can see what it. So here, if you wanted to play a game back in the day, this was what was involved. So, <laughs> so old disc that used to come in the uh, computer magazines back in the day. So has that got games loaded on it? Just uh, it's, freebie little games that somebody like you wrote? Yeah, and they're written in basic, so they're real slow. Okay. Um, but they're good. They'll, and they're using character graphics, so you can see what those look like. So you slide the old floppy disk in, and that would have came free in like a computer magazine back in the day. So I'm going to get this off the screen. So he's he's done playing with his uh, 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 little thing that he wrote. Now, is this going to, is this going to, that's going to overwrite all of that in RAM, isn't it? Yep. Are you going to cry? No, I could save it to disc if I wanted to, but I don't. You've already got it. I've got multiple copies. All right, so it's disappearing, people, because we're going to load what's on the disc into the RAM in the computer. And so all of that, the lines that he had written are gone. So I'm going to, well, let me let me turn these off because I don't want them still on the screen. That would, You know what? Actually, we're going to see if they uh, clear those when we run this program. That'll be neat. a little neat little experiment. Okay. So load. So he's going to load. I'm going to load dollar sign. Dollar sign is the file table, so I can see all the files on the disk. Oh, and, wait, wait a minute. I've got it oh, too, yeah. too low where I can't see that. Okay, and, all right, we're good. Go ahead. All disks, drives shipped from the factory with an ID of device number eight. <laughs> Of course we would know that. Yes. Yeah, we would know that. Well, it's actually most games in the day would actually, um, in fact... Ah, uh, this one doesn't have it. Most games in the day would actually say load star eight to play. Yeah. So for people that didn't know. That's crazy. Um, and the reason eight is because the tape cassette tape drive was device one, and then you had printers that took up the other spots. And oh, okay. By the time you get, by the time the disk drives were around, that was just the next available one. So load device not present because I have to turn on the disk drive. <laughs> Nuclear fifth of fifth. So let's do a load dollar sign device eight. It's searching for dollar signs, load. aren't we all? Loading. So ready. So now I can list in memory. Okay, so you pulled off of the <laughs> thing. Yeah. So there's. All so that's everything that's loaded on that disk. Yes. So they gave you all that free with a magazine. That's pretty cool. Um. 
So let's do uh, Digger 64. That sounds interesting. Okay, so we're going to try out game Digger 64. Now, it probably didn't even come with instructions or anything. You just loaded this crap up. Uh, let's see what we got here. Oh, okay, so I... Hold that up to the thing. <laughs> All right. How to use this disk. First type, load menu 8, but you used the dollar sign. Why yeah. did you do that? Uh, dollar sign is file table. Okay. Um, menu is actually a program they put on this thing, on this uh, disk drive just for... Let's see, all the games. let's see it yeah, man sure why not so, <laughs> wait you're already on load oh thank you sir load so they built this into it a little menu, yeah, a little menu. he was going to do it the hacker way though and I, I agree with him i like the hacker way too so, yeah, it so it's going to do the same exact damn thing isn't it pretty much well it's, uh, it's putting it in memory so now the program's in memory and now and here's the thing uh for basic programs Copy protection wasn't much of a thing because uh, first, all right, let me just get these balls off the screen. We've, we've proven that the balls are going to stay there. Yes, yes. And they're kind of annoying. So let's get the balls off the screen. All right, cool. So uh, you see I loaded menu in the memory? Yeah. Well, copy protection wasn't great because there's the menu program. <laughs> That's pretty cool. So, so you could copy. If you had enough disks to save everything, you could just steal crap nonstop. You could probably save it on that disk if there's enough room. Uh, yes, you can. And, <laughs> well, it's uh, already on the disk. You wouldn't have to save it. But you could take the disk out, put another disk in, and save it. Yeah, yeah. It, uh, that's why most games were cartridges at the time. Yeah. So let's uh, let's run this, see what it's going to do. Damn. Man. That's pretty cool. All right, so we're going to try to play this game. It is uh, worth mentioning the Commodore had the slowest disk drive of any computer. At Before the time. attempting to run any programs, so it was the slowest disk drive. Okay. Yep. Before attempting to run any programs, please refer to the instructions in the Computes Gazette magazine issue dated the same month as this disk. Please note the Gazette disk often features programs which write data to the disk. Copy those programs to another disk. This disk is write protected. That's correct. Okay. That's cool. Yeah, man. It made a nice little menu. Let's see, it was page one of three. So, so this was 1980, March 1985. Computes Gazette for VIC-20 and, and uh, Commodore 64. Table of contents for March 1985. Uh, and apparently, for those that can see at home, this uh, cost $13. Wow. Okay. So Damn, back then? Yeah. Hmm. So press return for next page. So we got Baker's Dozen. Um don't know what the different ones are digger now we want something fun man we don't want some crap yeah we don't want like a like a trivia game and i know they're gonna have nothing but damn trivia games on here well digger's probably dig dug oh okay i had to guess directory sort heat, heat seeker. seeker yeah get more from your commodore 64 ad <laughs> hey, let's play the ad Come on. yeah sure let's play the ad let's, let's play the ad all right let's see if they can get us if this is I've just, got my wallet ready. If this is just text, I'm even mad. This is how you get more from your Commodore 64 people. If you don't already subscribe to... Okay, so there's your... Yep, character graphics. Character graphics you were talking about. Computes. Gazette. Here's how to get more from your 64. More fun with such new game excitement as Trap'em, Baghdad, Mystery at Marple Manor, and Campaign Manager. Don't more challenge. Ready to tackle more advanced projects? In Computes Gazette, you'll learn how to use tape and disk files, how to program the function keys, writing transportable basic, more programs from Sprite Magic to Ultra Font. <laughs> from Magazine Indexer to Directory Sort and Automatic Proofreader and more. More buying guidance. You'll profit from comprehensive reviews of everything, from games to word processors to printers, modems, and disk drives, because you're more alive than ever before. You're into your Commodore 64. Subscribe now to Compute's Gazette and start receiving every information-packed issue. To order your subscription or a sample issue, call toll-free 800-334-0868. In North Carolina, call 919-275-9809. <laughs> what the hell is wrong with North Carolina? They don't even get the same phone number. That must, or they must have been in North Carolina. One year, 12 issues is $24. Two years, 24 issues is $45. Three years, 36 issues is $65. A single sample issues was $4. And they're reloading the menu program. That's pretty cool. All right, so it's just a little ad. Yeah, and 
you could tell it was written in basic because of how slow it loaded everything yeah yeah all right so let's let's load a game let's do digger let's see how long it takes to load digger loading digger 64 please stand by you know these discs now that i now that i see what's on them are very valuable i didn't think they had much worth that is not dig dug that's much better Oh, it is Dig Dug. <laughs> hey, see if you got the pump. Um, I think I need a joystick for this game. Oh, well, let's see if you can get it to do anything. Oh. No, that's you. All right, what did I do? You're the guy in the middle. Yeah, but I don't know how Better I Other people are the trolls. I have no idea how I moved. You hit the arrow key. I tried the arrow key. Oh, okay. Started going down. <laughs> I want to see if you can, uh, if he's got the pump. I don't even know how I, oh. Oh, is this one of those? I played one game like this that uses the number keys to move. Well, if you had a number pad, that would work good. No, apparently no. not. All right. This is well, this hasn't worked out how I planned. All right, let's play a different game. Let's find one that you don't need the joystick for. Yeah. Unless I've got one. Dari joysticks work. Dari joysticks work? Yep. Well, hell, why didn't you say something? Hell, I've got an ace joystick right there. <laughs> um, for the... Uh, for whatever reason, most games, uh, even though Commodore had two joystick ports labeled one and two, the first player was almost always joystick port two. Oh, okay. That's interesting. So let's just, uh... Alright. Alright, here we go. He's more alive than ever before. Oh, there it's working! Alright, hit the button. What does the button do? Alright, so hitting the rocks kills you, and the button didn't look like it did anything. So what, how do you... Oh, yeah. oh, you dig under the rocks to smash the guys, probably, like in Dig Dug. Yep. You just don't have the, uh... Button doesn't do anything, it looks like. Oh, one guy just killed himself. All right. Um, I was going to make a bad joke. I, I better not. Oh, got one. Oh, yeah. Oh, they give you exactly enough rocks that you can't mess this up. Oh, I ran into the rock. <laughs> you should have known better. All right, let's play a different game. Yeah, this, is this one, uh, yeah, I don't want to say it sucks because I'm a very positive person, but... Let's you know, see. time has left this one behind. There we go. So let's... All right, we're going to play one last one, and then the, this video is way too long. People are probably asleep by now. Ready, load menu. I mean, you know, people are asleep on the couch. They're still good for views, though. That's true. That's true. Yep. All right. So we're running the, the table of contents again, the menu. Now, these discs, would these programs run on anything that runs uh, basic? Uh, no, they won't, uh, for two reasons. One, um, the Commodore's display graphics, all the stuff I explained is specific to the VIC-2 chip they use for their so if i tried playing this on something else that ran basic it would basically not you wouldn't be able to see it right it would well, be all screwed up or would it not even attempt it it wouldn't even attempt it and as worth mentioning the commodore discs even though they are the same discs that would go in dos machines and ti and tandy and all that they use their own format so it wouldn't even read oh one okay of the discs. yeah that makes sense so yeah. All right, let's try a different game. Let's see what we got. Dig Dug or... Go to the third. The, the, the You know, they probably hid something good on the back. No, they did not. Freaker. They did not. They did not hide anything good on the back. Heat Seeker sounds... Heat like... Seeker sounds freaking awesome. Okay, so... We're going to play Heat Seeker, people. So, for those at home... I'm going to guess that's Missile Command. Yeah. There's no... Uh, there's only four function keys, so to get to F2, I have to hold Control key and <laughs> press F1. Obviously. Yeah. That, that makes complete sense. Because, yeah, I mean, look at this. There was no room for <laughs> yeah. four other functions. Especially since you needed those big ass keys. Yeah. If you put smaller ones, you know, Heat Seeker, use joystick and button to select. Novice, intermediate, uh, expert. Go uh, for expert. Uh, You're an expert. <laughs> oh. Sucker! <laughs> Number of players. No, we're just going to do one yeah. player. 
Oh. Oh hell! Oh, I'm the jet. Okay, so I'm the jet, and I have to avoid the missiles. <laughs> <laughs> with the kamikaze with the kamikaze plan all right so i apparently they heat seek which is your problem okay we're gonna have to go back to, to uh novice yeah, yeah novice you have no clue what the hell you're doing i mean I found and it looks like they've got plenty of, of stuff to fire at you oh <laughs> you got him to shoot himself all right okay novice yeah, yeah novice, novice absolutely novice there we go <laughs> this may be the greatest game of all time. Ah. Man. Wow. Oh, you're getting points. So let me let me figure out your points. You, okay, you got 100 points when you wrecked into somebody. You're getting points just for surviving, just from time. All right, I think I think I've figured this out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's awesome, but you're not getting any time points oh. because you're you're. Oh. All right. Oh come on, this game's way too easy. <laughs> I think I might have uh, figured out. You figured it out in less than sixty seconds. All right, so you don't. It's hard to go perfectly straight without going up. Oh, okay. I wonder what happens when all of them are gone. <laughs> Try it one more time. All I wonder right. what happens when when all the missiles are gone. Mercy. <laughs> oh, I, that, I saw that happening. You can't fly vertically. What the hell are you thinking? You can't go straight. You can only. You, I'm always drifting slightly up or down. Well, that's how planes are, man. Have you never flown a plane? Uh, can't say that I have. No. Not one where people survived, anyway. All right, folks. Well, we think that's enough for this video. Keep playing, Matt. <laughs> We're going to keep playing, but. We're going to stop filming, so we hope you enjoyed us playing around with this Commodore 64. If you have any questions, put them down below, and I'll make Matt log on and reply to all of them, because I won't know how to answer any of them, probably. So, uh, give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film this for you while we mess around with this thing, and uh, we will see you on the next video. I hope you enjoyed it.